And we have the run you all donated for, Mega Man X 100% with Walrus Prime. Uh, hi, I'm Walrus Prime. Um, this is my primary category, 100%, so big shout outs to everybody who donated so that I could play this category. Um, behind me on the couch, I've got uh, former any percent world record holder for this game, Tiki77747. I've got uh, Tokyo, former X2 any percent record holder, and uh, anime aficionado, BJW. Um, <laughs> so. That's my roll call. Uh, we're gonna get this run started. Let me just double check. We don't wanna get to the capsule and have the wrong dash button. So that looks good. And uh, whenever we're ready, let's go with uh, five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Big day! Uh, big day! <laughs> <clears throat> All right, here we go. Hardest stage in the game. Uh, if you've seen my GDQ runs before, I have a a bit of a history here, and we're off to a bad start. So, <laughs> big day, big day. Um, back in 2016, we did a four-way race of this category, and I had a bit of an accident here. So let's just—it's not going to happen this time. Yeah, dude. <laughs> There's no way it can possibly. Yeah. Happen. Nothing can go wrong. <clears throat> okay, we got some bees. These guys got some random miss, and that's not the right pattern. Yeah. So. The bees can either be passive, shoot missiles, or shoot machine guns. I want health. No health either. Oh my god. Yeah. So he's gonna have to take this bee less Little aggressively. Ooh, yeah. So yeah, he just got bad luck from both bees. Unfortunately. Really bad luck. So I gotta just take the take the time loss here, rather than risk the death. Yeah. But either way, it's not like the biggest deal. It's probably about four or five seconds of time loss. Yeah. Uh, but it's better than dying. Huh? Better than yeah, dying. better than absolutely better than dying. Uh, but like, if this were an actual attempt, that would be a reset, just yeah. just based on luck. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this intro's got quite a bit of randomness to it, but uh, got a lot of health. Let's see, I guess I got to do task cars. Has more walking than randomness, though. Yeah, it's got a lot of walking too. Okay, we didn't get the bad bullet, so so you're good. We're okay for now. Yeah, so this strat that he's doing right now, it's uh, called task cars, uh, somewhat facetiously because uh, it, the test doesn't actually like use this strat uh, in particular anymore. But um, essentially, you take damage from the cars, and uh, at the end of the level, you need to be at low health anyway. Uh, and if you walk forward while the car is also moving forward, then you get a bit of extra speed. Yeah, you need to be at three health or less to trigger that trapping shot from Vile. Otherwise, he punches you in the face and you lose time. So we're through the intro. No deaths. Yeah. Let's go. So far, so good. <laughs> um, <laughs> a little bit of a cutscene. Our boy Zero comes to save the day. Um, we'll see him again later, but no spoilers, please. It's my first time. You guys think that Zero is orange or he's red? Oh my gosh. <laughs> red. Got a bunch of red. I think it's red. What do you think, Tiki? I'm sticking with orange. Zero's made of like this couch material. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so the route is, well, it starts pretty simple. Uh, Penguin first, obviously, because there are the dash boots here. And that is where the run is really going to start to pick up the pace. But prior to that, there is some. Uh, some movement tech. You'll notice me jumping at the bottom of these right-facing slopes. Um, X gets a little speed boost while walking down the slope, and by jumping at the bottom of it, you get to maintain that across some flat sections. Also, you jump a little higher, so coming up, I'll be using, taking advantage of that extra height to reach a ledge. Also, by turning around on a slope that's facing the wrong direction, and then jumping and turning back the other way, you can uh, also save a few frames that way. And dash boots. This is where the run really, really gets going. Uh, since this is 100%, I will be collecting all eight heart tanks in each stage, four sub tanks, and uh, four armor upgrades, the boots included, as well as one secret Easter egg item uh, at the very end of the eight Mavericks. Nice. That's a pretty tough strat, the no-stop hallway there. I've been having a lot of trouble with that recently. 
Here's ideally our only mech use in the run. See ya, buddy. <clears throat> now, if you were paying attention in Mega Man 5, you had we had a friendly bird. His name was Beat, right? Um, in this game, it's kind of the opposite. Birds, as the old adage goes, birds are jerks. So, coming up first, we have Chill Penguin. We don't want to see slides from him. He's invulnerable for the duration of every slide. So, ideally, we see a lot of ice breath and slides, of course. So, a lot of this speed run is uh, very dependent on luck. Um, so, there are actually quite a few reset points in this run. Uh, one of them you saw earlier in the intro stage was on the bees. Um, this is another one. If Penguin slides a lot, then you essentially have to reset and, like, no amount of execution can save it. But this this was a pretty good pattern. I think I think I only counted, like, two. Yeah, yeah, it, was two. yeah. it was pretty easy. Yeah. Uh, another thing to note, um, I'm always going to try to finish the stage in the middle because X has to walk to the center before he can teleport out, so you can save a little time after the fight by uh, finishing him from the center of the, the arena. So up next, uh, Boomer Coinger. We're not going directly into weakness order um, because this boomerang is a very powerful weapon, as you'll see later, for speed. Not so much for damage, but for, for doling, um, for collecting items and stuff quickly. Ooh, right wall's free slash yep. impossible. This stage is probably, it's up there. Either top uh, one or two hardest stages in the run to do quickly. It's kind of in contrast to a lot of the other stages in that it's got a lot of vertical movement, whereas most of the others are strictly horizontal, and vertical movement can be very tough to optimize. Uh, here's a little little spike glitch. You can um, kick walls from up to seven pixels away, and by just trying to kick the wall without actually pressing right into it, you can take the hits done without taking the damage, and then you can just stand here for the rest of the elevator. It's kind of nice. Ooh, come on. Yeah. Come, go ahead. So all the climbing in this level can get pretty taxing on the hands. Um, and a lot of these jumps are actually a little bit more oh my gosh. Than, they, than they might look. <laughs> yeah, um, we're like, like that double double kick could cause a lot of problems, as you saw there. Uh, and the, like the first spot where he... Okay. First, first try. <laughs> Only Iceless matters, nothing else. Yep, yeah, only Iceless matters. I actually totally forgot this was a uh, 100%. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky I remembered. I spent all day practicing any percent because it did not look like that incentive was going to get met. <clears throat> but uh, I'm, I'm glad it did because I get to showcase a fairly new route. Um, hasn't really been showcased other than HRDQ. Yeah, this fight is uh, pretty simple when you know the strat. So the way so the way that fight works is you can get him into that loop, and if you get him there, he's guaranteed. He's he's guaranteed to be in that loop for the first 14 health, uh, which is seven shots. Um, and then after that, he can either continue to uh, be in that loop, um, or he can start teleporting. Okay, up next we have Stink Chameleon. This is the big route change um, that is very recent, and this is the most dangerous nerve-wracking part of the run. Um, I'm going to be utilizing what's called a Phantom Grab. I'll try to explain it afterwards, but uh, to get the heart without water or charged ice sled, it's very, uh, very precise. So, and if I miss it, I die, and it's frame perfect. So, <laughs> good luck, me. Oh, and it's luck dependent, so I got to farm a drop off of this guy. Oh, baby. oh man! <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I was really worried about that. <laughs> First try and no plus seven, unlike Spike Vegeta. <laughs> okay. I I need to 
count those uh, shots. You, ammo management in this stage is pretty important. You utilize 18 uh, boomerangs on that guy so that you save exactly 10 for the Stink Chameleon because it's also his weakness. So, Walrus, do you want to explain the magic of what just happened? or? Oh, yeah, Phantom Grab explanation. I almost forgot. Um, the way that works, you collect an item from your boomerang one frame before your, your target, I guess, is set to be loaded. And it actually just loads it into your boomerang instead of its uh, intended location. <laughs> and in order to do that, oh, man, um, I needed to take damage so that a health drop would actually give me the refill fanfare so that I could buffer my input after collecting it. But it's a frame-perfect release of right in position. Uh, pretty precise. You'll see, I, hopefully, it, hopefully two more, at least one, <laughs> ideally. Yeah. Up to three, up to three more yeah. of those phantom grabs in the run. Yeah, and the next two are, uh, so one of them is like really kind of eventful. <laughs> uh, it's in Storm Eagle, um, and I think uh, we'll just let it be like a pleasant surprise if Walrus gets it, and we'll explain that after. Um, and then the other one is in Flame Mammoth, and that one is very, very like minor and inconsequential if you miss it. Very tough fight. Yeah. And then the one on Dillo. Armadillo sub tank too. Oh, yeah. right, right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. But that's that's a different kind of kind of grab, bro. Yeah. So the whole power of this route comes to fruition in the next stage. Uh, doing Chameleon early allows me to have Sea Sting for Storm Eagle, whereas in the previous routes um, you would have to do the Buster Eagle fight, which is not only longer, but also more subject to, to the randomness of Eagle. So we get to mitigate some of the randomness as well as speed up the fight by having Sea Sting. And uh, right away we've got, hopefully, another Phantom Grab. This one, oh, 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 okay. oh, 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 And that was the Phantom Grab. Yeah, nailed it, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> okay, but seriously. No, oh. Oh, I missed it. I was, you need a um, simultaneous dash jump there, and I hit dash just maybe a frame early. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> These are actually the hardest platforms in the game. Yeah, this isn't any percent strat. Normally, you don't have to do all this stuff, but that's all right. It's only a 15-second time loss. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> you got the one that really matters. Yeah, the big one. Yeah, first try. Um, so, basically, the reason that's in the game, or that's in the speed run at all. <laughs> I'm not used to doing those platforms. Um, the reason, the reason that uh, he goes for the phantom grab and chameleon, uh, even though it's super <coughs> risky and not hard to do, uh, is because it lets you do chameleon third, which gives you feasting for storm eagle, which mitigates a lot of RNG on top of just being faster overall. Yeah, I feel like I said that. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for well, reiterating. Well, you know, for people who are just tuning in right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Got to warm up those hands, man. Yeah. I mean, I have been playing all day, but I've been playing any percent. So. But the fight's the same. So this should go well. Eagle is another one of those jerk birds we talked about earlier. He uh, he has a propensity for diving and flying off the screen, so hopefully we don't see him leave and I can kill him quickly. He's going. See ya. He's going. <coughs> yeah. So this isn't like the maximum amount of dives he can give. Oh, it's oh he only gave one. Okay. He does love me. Is he going back up though? No. Oh. Okay. All right. So that was a pretty good pass. That was that was pretty decent. Always lucky. Yeah. You know me. But yeah. uh, who's next? <laughs> you guys remember the boss order? Mandrill, right? Uh, uh, D-Rex. D-Rex, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Flame Mammoth. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, not that one. It's okay. We've already beat the stage, so we can exit. But uh, that's a <laughs> bit of a time loss. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> you were serious about the next stage thing. Yeah. yeah. Only uh, any percent. <laughs> Get to rush in your stage select input. Stage select is the hardest boss in the game. It's confirmed. 
<clears throat> this stage is pretty cool. It's got some neat movement stuff. It also showcases one of the, the cool things about this game that, uh, like, beating certain bosses has effects on other boss stages. Like, Flame Mammoth, you would think, would maybe not be so icy of a stage, but since we've defeated Chill Penguin, um, the whole place is frozen. So I guess the, there was a avalanche or something hit the, the factory. I don't know. But here we get the Buster upgrade. This is really cool. This is... Um, Having C Sting when I get this Buster upgrade is very, very nice, and we'll put it to use right away. Um, first, we're going to use the Buster upgrade to sort of shortcut to a sub tank here using the Ice Sled, but after that, you'll see pretty heavy usage of Charged C Sting. Let's see if we can get this Phantom Grab to make up for Eagle. I don't think I'm on pace, though. No. that. Okay, here's Charge Cease thing. It allows you to simply pass through enemies, which is pretty fancy. And it also um, can mitigate some lag due to the, the flashing changing colors. So put it to pretty heavy use for the rest of the run. <clears throat> Flame Mammoth is a pretty simple boss. Um, we've got Storm Tornado, which is a pretty overpowered weapon, and it lingers on screen, so you can get double hits on Flame Mammoth pretty easy. And he's only got like one attack that even hurts you, besides contact damage. That one. <laughs> <laughs> nice demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mammoth. Yeah. So Kwanger's next, right? Yeah, back to Kwanger we go for for another revisit. No, we do have a revisit right now, though. Since this is 100%, we do have to go back to Penguin and get the hard upgrade. And uh, Mammoth's weapon is required to access that. So we'll do a quick revisit here to pick that up. Get to see this section with boots now. Mm, maybe. Boots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really <laughs> utilizing them well here. Uh, do we have time for some donations? Oh, yeah. Bring it on. All right. Uh, well, it is worth noting that we do have uh, Symphony of the Night blindfolded coming up. We're still a little less than halfway uh, toward that goal of $15,000, but I think we can make it. We still have about two hours until that's going to occur. So get your donations in if you really want to see that Symphony of the Night blindfolded. Yeah, you guys definitely want to see that. That is a super cool run. And we have uh, $55.55 from Mr. Cab saying... Big day! Big day! Big day. <laughs> Thanks, Cab. Love you. All right, this is probably the other hardest stage up here, up there with Kawanger. This one is more horizontal. The movement isn't as hard, but there is a lot of weapon swapping and item usage here that looks pretty cool when done properly, so hopefully I can show it off. Make Mr. Cab proud. <coughs> That's a pretty tough Tough strat. Love that pink shot. Yeah. Uh, oh, ice. We didn't talk about how powerful ice can be. Um, it's super, super cool. The ricochets uh, also do damage. So the way X's buster works is the shot actually comes out sort of in front of him. And if you can sort of deposit the shot inside the enemy, the ricochets also hit. So you can deal massive damage very quickly with uh, ice as you might have noticed in that last segment. That actually went pretty well. Well, this is another stage that is affected by having defeated uh, Eagle. It kind of, I guess his plane crashes into the power plant here and uh, shuts off the lights and also takes away Thunder Slimer's lightning ability. He's unable to charge. That heart grab is not free, by the way. That's why I lingered. It didn't look like I got it, but Thanks, Paul. Let's call it Paul Hart after our boy, Paul Lather. <clears throat> that one went pretty well. I'm happy with that stage. <clears throat> Spark Mandrill can be a bit of a jerk. We also can call him Mike Tyson sometimes. We'll see if he gives many punches. Just one, not bad at all. Always we, lucky. Yeah, we're trying to time the ricochets to hit him 
on his, uh, you know, as soon as he comes out of invulnerability frames. But uh, if he punches at you, your timing's kind of thrown out for a loop. You gotta avoid him. But that was that was a pretty good pattern. Okay, Armored Armadillo. This one's got a pretty cool Phantom Grab. It's not as flashy as some of the others, but it saves the it saves more time than the whole route change of Chameleon Third. If I can get it, luckily I've got two chances at it. So if I don't get it this first time, we'll be back here again later to try to get it again. <clears throat> Need a drop from one of these bats. Yeah, no drop, no luck. You can uh, phantom grab the sub tank that's behind that mole bore. Hopefully, hopefully I can get it on the return trip here. This stage is pretty straightforward. Lots of lots of riding on carts, which is sort of a nice respite because the next stage can be kind of difficult, especially in any percent. Luckily in Hundo, we've got lots of health to work with, so. And this heart grab, this no-stop heart grab. Uh, I beefed it. That's okay. We've got a few more chances to get that heart later. Um, yeah. You notice me jumping up and down on that card. That's not just for show. There are a bunch of birds that are supposed to spawn in that area. And uh, by jumping off the cart at precise times, you can avoid their spawn triggers entirely, which saves a boatload of lag. That's one of the primary factors to going fast in this game is trying to mitigate lag. Um, ooh, nice, friendly Dillo roll. He is another big source of, of frustration in a lot of runs because his initial roll can last as long as he wants it to, and he's invulnerable for the, for the duration. So that was the perfect pattern he opened up immediately. Ooh, this is an okay run so far, other than carpet, I think. That... And the revisit, oh man. <laughs> Forgot about that already. <clears throat> Launch Octopus. Oh, you notice the, the, the Japanese names are a little different than you might recognize. Uh, we do play on the J card. It saves about 12 seconds or so over the course of the run due to text differences only, otherwise identical speed run. Here's another big advantage of uh, Sea Sting early. I can use uh, Charge Sea Sting on these submarines and sort of just stand inside their hitbox and take them out very quickly. Otherwise, uh, in the previous route, you would do Sea Sting uh, or Chameleon last, so you would not have this this option. Oh, get out of here with that. It's another lag monster, the lag light. Ooh, I thought I was going to get through. It's pretty rare to get all the way through there without taking a hit. Oh, that's that's going to be some lag. We <laughs> 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 try to climb the wall to take him off screen as he explodes, but I missed. Three, four, five. There's another one of those sea snakes <clears throat> underground there, but we don't get to see him. Sorry. <clears throat> now, Launch Octopus is a very scary fight any percent. Less scary in Hundo, but he can still cost you quite a bit of time. He's got a lot of projectiles that he fires all around the room, um, some homing fish, some missiles and stuff. He's also got an energy drain attack that he's uh, invulnerable for, so hopefully we don't see those. And since this is Hondo, I can sort of just tank all this damage and try to maximize my DPS. And it looks like, if I can kill him, no swirls. So that was very nice. It's pretty hard, because the Rolling Shield's got this massive hitbox, right? And he's got all these projectiles all over the place that can very easily block your shots. So it uh, can be kind of difficult to hit him with them sometimes. So that's eight Mavericks down. We've got uh, one more revisit to do before we can go to the fortress. Let's see if I can get this one for my boy Tokyo behind me. Fancy strat here. Oh, mm. missed it. It's a frame perfect weapon swap you can do there. Get a glitched ammo sprite. <clears throat> it's 
So we're back here for our secret weapon and two more upgrades that I didn't get yet. Um, let's see if we can get this last phantom grab. Please drop from the bat. There's one. Oh, baby. Ooh, so nice. that right there, not very flashy, but saves about seven seconds or maybe six with, for not having to go back behind that mole borer to collect it. Pretty good stuff. So now um, I guess would be a really good time for donations because we are going to be seeing this this whole section quite a few times in a row. If you've got any, Mike. Uh, I do indeed. We have... Uh, $100 from Life of Geek, who says, I love GDQ, so let's have more of it. This is for Blindfolded Castlevania. Okay. No worries. We didn't get the heart, but we'll be back at least three three more times. Yeah. Yep. What's your opinion of uh, this part of the run, BJW? <laughs> <laughs> this is why I love X1. <laughs> <laughs> this uh. <laughs> This Easter egg is hidden so well. It, <laughs> I don't know. It's a pretty, pretty annoying part of the run, honestly. You just do this same section over and over again. Oh my gosh, am I gonna have to do the slow strat? Um, the idea here is that by having, once you have collected all the upgrades and stuff, there is a capsule that will spawn on this ledge up uh, above the door here. But only after you've seen it four times total. On the fifth time, if you have all the other requisites, it'll be there. So that's why we're jumping in the pit, so we can go back to this checkpoint and uh, only have to do half the stage again. Come on. Oh, oh my god. Man. Okay, we'll just do the safe one next time. No, just go for it, man. Yeah. Is this, uh, this is my third death, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's always so, it's so hard for me to count because I'm falling asleep during this part of the run, but... <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, we did it. <laughs> hardest, hardest heart in the game, man. You kept dying for that heart. Yeah, that's it why. And Ryu Light, <laughs> Doctor Ryu. <laughs> has a special gift for us. This is a very powerful weapon. Um, the, as X says, Hadouk. Um, <laughs> it does 32 damage to all bosses in the run. Well, all enemies in the run. And, this is, and all bosses have 32 health. So it's a very effective tool for completing the rest of the run fast. And we'll get to see some use out of it very soon. But now we're on to the fortress. We've got another unwinnable sequence with Vile here, so you're gonna see some intentional damage boosting uh, in the lead up to that. Let's see if I can get what we call Task Leap. Oh, mm. never mind, missed the dash. These platforms are notorious for eating dashes, but that was my fault. Okay, six or less health to trigger the vial sequence, so. And we've got a cutscene skip here. Okay, didn't miss it. Um, if you touch the floor after the cameras panned up in that previous room, Vile and Zero have a, have a little conversation and then retreat into this room. But by skipping it, we can uh, sort of mend, uh, meld the cutscenes together. So the fight progresses as the cutscene plays. Um, there is a risk of a soft lock here, but. Uh, Done it enough times and pretty safe. <clears throat> oh no, zero. <clears throat> okay, here's our first uh, use of Hadouken. It uh, sort of trivial trivializes a lot of these endgame fights. Just a little dash to the right, Hadouken to the left. Got him. See you, Vile. <laughs> So you're going to see that uh, a few more times. Not all the Hadoukens are that simple. You'll see some, some sort of fancy ones a little later. Oh no, rip zero. Sorry, buddy. I'm sure we'll never see him in another X game again. Definitely not his own series. 
definitely. Not. No, no. <laughs> okay, this is the uh, Boomer Kawanger refight. He can be a jerk. Hopefully, he's nice. We'll see what happens here. Okay, he dashed right into it. <laughs> he can't stop short. He can stop short and throw his boomerang, which is fine. He still gets hit, but he can also stop short and teleport out of the way, which can be very frustrating. And uh, pretty heavy usage of the cease thing here. Just killing some enemies for re lag reduction and working our way here to Bow Spider. Bow Spider is a pretty, uh, pretty tough boss casually. You see this is a pretty big wall for a lot of early speedrunners as well. But with the Hadouken and good pattern reading skills, she falls pretty quickly. Okay, up next, uh, Sigma 2. This, uh, in any percent, we call the, the bird casino because we got to fight both the jerk birds in the same stage. In 100%, it's not so bad for, I think, fairly obvious reasons. But uh, the, the end boss of this stage can be a bit of a troll, so we'll see what happens there. Tiki, how's your experience with this fight? Uh, I mean, I think this is one of the hardest Hadokens in the game, for sure. <laughs> the penguin always throws an ice cube first, and you so you just simply jump over it, and you can input your quarter circle forward, um, well in the air, and shoot upon landing. I guess I should mention there are a couple restrictions to the Hadouken. Uh, one of which is that you have to be standing on the ground. The other is that you have to have full health to to use it. So, um, no damage allowed. Otherwise, we've got to find a way to refill or fight the bosses normally. But there are some workarounds to that uh, standing on the ground clause I said earlier. We'll hopefully see a little later. Eagle's pretty simple. Just get close and hot as he flaps you away. Up next is uh, Rangda Bangda, the, the, the large endgame luck factor. She's got uh, two eyes and a nose. <laughs> the eyes could be three different colors. Ideally, we want to see a blue right away and then the red that comes down so that we can auto them, but we'll see what happens. We don't want to see greens. Ooh, nice. nice. Come on down. Ooh, Ooh. 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 The god rang to... Oh, oh, no! The god rang Is that game over? Yeah, that's game over. Oh, no. Oh, that's so bad. Well, you get to show up the hardest auto again. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot, but one missed dash destroys a very good stage. Yeah, it's rough because uh, you use like all of your lives getting the Hadoken, so one death in the end game is gonna get you a game over, essentially, unless you pick up another one. Yeah. I was so excited about the the perfect rank that <laughs> I guess I just forgot to hit the dash button. Unbelievable. Well, now's a good time for donations since we've already seen this part. <laughs> wow. Uh, we have $50 from Sagging Rufus who says, Mega Man X 100% is one of my favorite speedruns to watch. Good luck. This Thank donation you. is going towards Blindfold Symphony of the Night Incentive. We have $15 from Polly Swag who says, Come on, everybody, let's get this blindfolded Castlevania. We have $50 from Alan60, who says, doesn't matter if it's HDQ, SGDQ, or GDQX. Love everything about them. Let's get that blind Soten run. All right, round two. Round two. Yeah, can we get lucky again? Yeah, back to back. We just want to showcase more patterns. Yeah, yeah. we want to see the green eyes. Yeah, oh. that one was a little <laughs> bit too <laughs> easy. Yeah. It's too easy for our boy Walrus. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Dude, always lucky. What? Back there's, to back. There's two in a row. Unbelievable. All right. Looks like you're going to have to die again. <laughs> <laughs> I just missed the one cycle, though, so that's good. Okay. That's good enough. Um, so the one cycle is pretty tricky uh, on the nose. <laughs> you have to hit it four times. Uh, but it's like a pretty tight timing. Yeah, I shot one early there into his, into his iframe, so. Rip. 
Okay, two more stages left. Sigma three, uh, sort of a a trick heavy refight gauntlet. Um, one right away. Hopefully, we can skip this first refight. Oh no! Oop. Okay, just uh, take our time here. Make sure we do it right. Okay. You notice the camera didn't pan up, but we've got this black bar on the bottom. For whatever reason, the trigger to spawn Dillo in this room is the camera's position. So um, by bypassing that, we can bypass the fight entirely. Luckily, that health drop was there because I need full health to auto this guy. This is a pretty cool Hadouken if I can pull it off. Um, call it Air Hado. Nice. Very nice. <clears throat> So what we do there is we, we slam the sled in the wall for somewhere to stand and then uh, do our quarter circle forward and then pause afterwards to swap to Buster. And for one frame after regaining Control X is standing on the invisible sled that is now gone. So if you can buffer the input for the shot and throw one while being in the air. Let's go for the YOLO strat here. Why not? Yeah. Nice. That's a good pattern. He can do four different patterns. That's the perfect pattern. He just punches right into the Duke. Man. Little fish manip there. Hugging the right wall causes the first fish to look right. Allows us to take out three with the charged uh, charge spark. Octopus is a very simple fight. He's got three patterns, just three different jump heights. He always shoots missiles. Shoot one lemon to take it out. And that was the perfect pattern. Nice low jump. I've had pretty good luck this run, honestly. Yeah. Two god rangdas, like. <laughs> <laughs> Never before two God Rangas in one run. Yeah. First time. I think only bees were really bad. Yeah, bees were bad. Yeah. <clears throat> Man, it's pretty simple. He always jumps at you. You can either go left and hot right, or I like to walk underneath him and then throw my hot left. And uh, one more fight in this stage, our boy D-Rex. See if I can pull off. There's a pretty pretty precise uh, strat to get the Hado on him very quickly. See if we can get it. Nope, mm. I shot early. Uh, ooh, ooh got back up. the trade. Yeah, DBZ. Yeah, I shot a little early. You do your quarter circle forward jump and you land on the base of him, but I shot before I had landed, so the lemon came out and the auto hit iframes, but ends the breaks. Okay, last stage here, three fights. Um, a dog, a Jedi, and a combination, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> the first two are pretty simple. Um, we use this charge shot we've we've built up here to hit the dog right away, knock him on his booty, and then hot him from the center. Jedi Sigma. Just throw the hot right away. He runs right into it every time. No problem. Uh, unfortunately, the, the Hadouken doesn't work on Big Sig here. Um, it just You can hit him with it, it just tanks off and does zero damage. So, 16 rolling shields in this fight is done. Time is on the final hit, by the way. Good luck from the claw, even. Man, the Dude. luck in this run. <laughs> Always lucky. I I played poorly. Could have got a 34 here. One more, and time. time. Big day. Big, Big day. day. Big, Big day. day. What did I end up with? 38-11. Oof. That, that, <laughs> that's that game over, man. That lost a lot of time. Yeah. yeah. With a game over and a bad stage select, that's actually really, really good. Yeah. So that's Mega Man X 100%. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, guys. And thanks to everybody who donated so that I could show off the run. Um, Really cool. Uh, if you like Mega Man X, we've got a Mega Man X Relay coming up at AGDQ this year, so that's going to be super cool. Um, so make sure you tune in for that one in January. And thanks for having me. 
and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Walrus Prime, for that fun 100% uh, run. And we have a lot of donations from that run, including one from MS Kane for $100 on the X Block. My childhood at its most mind blowing. $100 from an anonymous donor. Love this de community dearly. 100% my drive. Heart you, Walrus in Tokyo. Good luck to my boys. We have $25 from Cleveland Rocks. First time watcher and first time donor. Love what you guys are doing. Let's keep it going and see that Castlevania Soten run. And speaking of the Soten run, if you want Setup one, Block 1 to become the Soten run, it is currently at $7,826.28 out of 15000 So we still have a little over 7000 to go. And trust me, you want to see this run because, I mean, it's a blindfolded Soten run. Why wouldn't you want to see it? And speaking of that, there is a donation from Bruce Nader who says, th for $5, saying, this is in favor of the blindfolded symphony of the night. There is no way I couldn't do my part to see this happen. Pun intended. Ah, Marissa Raptor summoning the G GDQ spirit and meme for $25. So amped to get a mini GDQ while we wait for HDQ in a few months. Good luck to all the runners and charities. Save the animals. And yes, for our uh, A Link to the Past and Super Metroid randomizer, you can donate to save or kill the animals. We have a $25 donation from Yerochan, who says, shout outs to whoever decided to play near Automata music over the break. You've done good work. We have $25 from Sleepless from Italy. Cat Dracula's castle is super spooky. Better to traverse it with your eyes closed. Let's get the Castlevania blindfolded run. It is worth noting that for uh, this marathon, subs and bits are not going towards the charity for this event because of complexities and logistics with the TwitchCon Charity Plaza. Subs and bits will go towards improving future game tons, quick shows, and events. And if you wish to support the charities, please make a standard donation. We have $10 from Ia Kavos, who says, first dono ever. Love the events, love the causes. Let's get that blindfolded Castlevania run. Speaking of the causes, uh, one of the causes we are supporting is uh, save the children. Save the children. Invest in childhood every day in times of crisis and for our future. In the United States and around the world, we give children a healthy start, the opportunity to learn, and protection from harm. By transforming children's lives now, we change the future. Uh, oh, we change the course of their future and ours. Last year, Save the Children worked in 120 countries and helped more than 185 million children. For more information about their programs, please visit www www.savethechildren.org. We have $10 from Buddy Cool 2013. Been watching since 2014. Always love to see the runners speedrunning the classics and new games. First time donating for a charitable cause. We have $50 from Saber Rider 42. I remember a few years ago when Rom Scout talked about a, 
how a blind person asked if it was possible to play the game blind, and back then he considered it at least possible. So nice to see that run finally happen. Well, it'll only happen if people donate enough for the run, and you have about two hours for it. We are going to play a quick ad break, so just uh, hold on to your seats. We have $25 from Starfire Girl. Happy to see a 100% run of my favorite ga all-time game. Equally happy to see a condensed GDQ at TwitchCon. Good luck to Walrus Prime, and sure you can. We have $15 from Cup of Joe. A surprise GDQ. I had to donate for the Soten incentive. Shout-outs to the fun cameraman. Much love, and ha! We have $15 from Amy155, who says, donation for me and my four-year-old all the way from Scotland. <laughs> 